Hi, uh, my name is Leah Bufo. I'm a postdoc at NTNU, and today I will present a work we are conducting with Simon and Hannah about soundscapes from the whale. Soundscape is a concept introduced in 1977 by Maria Schaffer that set the basis of acoustic ecology. It classifies the elements of ambient sound in three categories. The biophony that includes all non-human biological sound surfaces, such as baleen whale songs, dolphin whistles, and fish sounds. The geophony that regroups the sound sources generated by non-biological natural sources like meteorological noises, earthquakes, iceberg tremors, and a growing contribution, the anthropophony that comprise all sounds generated by humans from ship traffic to organ blasts. Soundscapes are usually analyzed using different spectrotemporal representations. They are a crucial tool for ecology and conservation purposes, as they are, for example, representative of an ecosystem's health. However, because they are often recorded from a fixed hydrophone, it can be stretched to understand cetaceans' habitat soundscapes from the animal's perspective. We are losing an important component of the way they experience ambient sounds, which is the variations with depth. In this work, we want to explore the possibility of using animal-borne recordings from acoustic tags to describe and characterize humpback whale habitat soundscapes from the animal's perspective, identifying both natural and anthropogenic sound sources. Let's start with a little background about data collection. So the data used in this work was collected by Odin Rickardsen, professor at the University of Tromsø. The fieldwork was conducted in November 2020 in northern Norway, more precisely in the fjords surrounding Sjørvøy that are north of Tromsø. The research team was supported by the University of Tromsø's research vessel, the Helme Hansen, and used two small ribs per tagging. At that time of the year, in the left bowl, fin whale, humpback whales, and killer whales gather in this area to feed on their key prey species, the Norwegian spring spawning herring. Previous studies have pointed toward the region covering an important feeding areas for cetaceans. Simultaneously, the fish abundance attracts numerous fishing vessels that are called purse seen, and the tourism industry increasing cetaceans' exposure and potential vulnerability to anthropogenic impacts. An interesting phenomenon occurring in this area, and illustrated by this photo, is an interaction between purse seen fishing vessels, killer whale, and humpback whales. When fishermen are pulling up their nets, it is common to observe a great number of individuals around, likely to feed on escaped fish that are then easy prey. So in this work, we will use one of the tag deployments as a proof of concept, using the tag multi-sensor abilities to give context to the acoustic data in our interpretation. Acoustic tags are biologer, meaning that they are placed directly on the animal skin. The one that we are using are developed by cats and are attached to the animal's back using a four suction cup, which leaves the skin unarmed. The deployment permit was granted by the Norwegian Food Safety Authority. And here is a short video of one of the deployments on a humpback whale that is approaching from a small zodiac. While on the animal, the tag was programmed to record data continuously, independent of surfacing or other behaviors. During that fieldwork, the tag were usually attached to the whale for seven to nine hours. Once the tag released, it floats at the surface and it must be retrieved through data downloading. It is localized using a radio beacon and iridium satellite. Afterwards, it can be prepared for a new deployment. As you can see on the scheme, the cat cams are equipped with different sensors in addition to a hydrophonic camera. There is a GPS and an accelerometer, a compass, a gyroscope, temperature measurement, light sensor and pressure. Now let's take a look at the data. So the whale was tagged at the location of the black star at 9.40 in the morning. The colored dots indicate the GPS position of the whale for the first two and beginning of the third hour of deployment. 
after that, unfortunately, the GPS stopped working. The black dots show the position of the support research vessel, the Helme Hansen, during the same time frame. It was the only large vessel in the area during the deployment period. On the right side are displayed the recordings from the different sensors. Uh, in this presentation, we will focus on the first two, the acoustic recordings and the depth. This is the spectrum of the entire deployment. Initially sampled at 96 kHz, the recordings are then sampled at 22.5 kHz for the analysis. Here, only the lower frequency part of the spectrum is displayed between 0 and 2 kHz. It is easy to identify the timing at which the tag is placed on the whale and drops in the water from the changes in the intensity. The tag is attached on the whale for about 8 hours. Several regular high-intensity impulsive noises are also visible in the spectrogram that correspond to surface breach and are due to medium changes. Also related to the whale's movement, flow noise is visible at low frequencies. We can also notice the tag self noise at 450 and 1300 Hz. A finer analysis of the data reveals the presence of killer whale's whistle and echolocation clicks before the fifth hour of recording. Some mechanical signal appears strong around 3.3 hours of recording. So from that overview, we thought that we needed a new representation of the data to look at the different acoustic contributions as a function of depth. Our idea is to work with some kind of indexes based on specific frequency band analysis. So we looked at these three instances to determine useful frequency bands representative of the mechanical noise present in the recording. To characterize the frequencies of interest, we looked at five minute portions of recording. It highlighted the presence of three frequencies at 700, 940 and 1130 hertz that could be characteristic of the mechanical noise. The flow noise is analyzed at 10 hertz. So we wanted to look at mechanical noise index. So we're looking at the ratio between mechanical noise characteristic frequency band here at uh, around 940 hertz and the noise band uh, 10 hertz lower. And the ratio is represented as a function of time and here is displayed between one and eight hour of recording. You can see an increase of this ratio on the different machinery events that were analyzed just before. These values were, are then used to color code the depth profile, limiting the extreme between 0 and 6 dB. The values of this ratio are high for a longer period of, of time that are simultaneous with the recorded killer whale signal and uh, happen on quite deep dive that could correspond to feeding events. The ratio is extremely low around the deepest dive and again a bit higher after. In pre in previous studies, flow noise has been shown to correlate with the animal speed. It is analyzed here as the energy in the 10 to 20 Hz frequency band and displayed on the depth profile. The values are color coded in regard to the average. Higher flow noise values are visible just after the placement of the tag and on the deeper dives. Around the third hour of recording, flow noise is globally low. It increases slightly when the whale dives and diminishes on the way up while the tendency is inverted around the fifth hour of recording on deeper dives. We also wanted to build an index that translates the potential presence of a humpback whale vocalization. It is based on a similar method that pre than previous work on SNR estimation for blue whale calls. So first we'll look at background noise estimation using a median filter on each frequency channel of a short time free transform. Then we investigate the presence of a transient signal of interest. So it is the maximum of the absolute value of the short time Fourier transform and this between 1000 and 1500 Hertz. Then we do the ratio between the transient estimation and the maximum of the background noise that is estimated around five kilohertz. So here is the result on two different portions of the recordings. The first one has an early event of high energy corresponding to surfacing events. The ratio values show peaks on each of the visible humpback whale vocalization. 
This ratio is thresholded as 6 dB to display the Humbug Rail Vocalization Index as a function of depth. To prevent any false value introduced by surfacing, indexes corresponding to depths shallower than 2 meters are discarded. This figure and the following are this figure and the following are a juxtaposition of the different indexes on 24 minutes of signal surrounding specific events. When the tag is deployed, the humpback vocalization index indicates a high number of vocalization, while machinery noise are low. The vocalization, as for the dives, are fairly shallow. From the previous flow noise index representation, it is likely that the whale is swimming fast. Around the first event, Around the first event with mechanical noise, the mechanical noise index show high values at all depths. The humpback vocalization index values are very low. Around event 3 with machinery noise, the humpback vocalization index shows a greater number of potential vocalization that do not have a high amplitude and so could be related to other individuals. The 700 and 900 hertz mechanical indexes show some high values, but interestingly, not at all depth. Especially for the 900 hertz, there seems to be a gap between 20 and 45 minutes that could be due to some propagation effects. This highlights that soundscape, from the animal perspective, do have a dependency in depth. In this presentation, we showed preliminary results of the ongoing work we're conducting at Antony towards the description of soundscapes from the perspective of the animal using CAT scan tags. The results show that frequency-based indexes are relevant for the analysis and allow us to add an additional dimension to the soundscapes, the depth. There are many perspectives to this work. First, to extend our analysis to other deployments that were done in the area, both on humpback and killer whales, in collaboration with the University of Tromsø. This analysis will also be used in the investigation of a potential dinner bell effect occurring in the area when the whales are coming to fishing vessel to feed. We also just received our own four cat scan tags and in the long run have many ideas to use them towards ambient noise and anthropogenic noise impact studies and using them to improve classical passive acoustic monitoring and to better understand cetaceans communication. Well, don't hesitate to reach out at this email address and thank you.